Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to discuss how do we restrict parabolas so that their inverses become a function. Now you know a parabola can be a positive x squared or a parabola could be a negative ax squared. When we did the inverse, we ended up with a drawing or relationship that looks like this. And for this one, we ended up with a relation that looked like this. Now, what we realized is that even though the parabolas were functions, their inverses were not functions. So, what we need to do is we need to restrict. Now restrict means that we will only draw a part of the graph. When we are doing this, what we need to remember we are going to restrict is the domain. You are going to limit the domain. So remember from your previous work you should know that domain is referral to the x-axis. So we are going to restrict the domain. But when we say we're restricting the domain, we are talking of the f of x. We are not talking of the inverse graph. How are we going to restrict it? We are basically going to draw half the graph. So we're only going to draw this specific piece. Or we're going to draw this specific piece. We're going to draw half. So our restriction is exactly on the turning point. So we're going to go from minus infinity till 0. Remember we are including 0 so it is a square bracket. Or we are going to go from 0 to infinity. Now this is for the specific drawing that I have drawn here. The safest way is to remember minus infinity to the turning points or from the turning points to infinity. Again remembering that the turning points are included so they are square brackets whereas in infinity is always excluded so they are round brackets. Now how does that help us? If we take the parabola that we had drawn y is equal to 3x squared we had a point at 0 0 we then had a point at 1 and 3 and at minus 1 and 3. Now we have this graph y is equal to 3x squared. When I did the vertical test it passed but as soon as I did the horizontal test it failed. But what happens when we restrict it? So in this specific case, I am going to first restrict it minus infinity to 0. When I am restricting it minus infinity to 0, I am drawing only half of the graph. And now if you do the horizontal test. Look what happens. It's 1 is to 1. Now how do you do the inverse? Remember you have a point. At this point you had minus 1 and 3. So which means when you do the inverse the x and y will swap. So I would have a point 3 and minus 1. That is your first helping hand. Second is we're going to have 0, 0. Then we know that it is going over the x is equal to y line. Now if you have to copy that, can you see all you have to do is follow the line. And you now have the inverse and the inverse is a function. So how did we restrict it? From minus infinity to 0. So minus infinity to the turning points. 
Now, let us look at the graph again. We have y is equal to 3x squared. In the first one, we restricted it to minus infinity to 0. But we could have also restricted it from 0 to infinity. Now, if we're restricting it 0 to infinity, it means I am only drawing this specific line. So let us draw that. We know that we have a point 0, 0 and we have a point 1 and 3. Now if you look at this part, number 1, it is a function but more importantly it is 1 is to 1. Let us now do the inverse. How do we do the inverse? We have a point 0, 0. We also have a point here it was 1 and 3 and remember it turns around, it swaps. So we are going to have 3 and 1, 3 and 1. Now if you are still not clear, we know that the graph has to go over the x, y line. If you look, it's simply going to be like this. Basically, it is crossing over. If I fold this over this, it will work. Now, when I am confused and I am unsure what to do, which is the inverse? I always draw the original graph and then I draw the inverse knowing that it is 90 degrees. Remember I told you it moves 90 degrees. Then I look and I always see that this one is easy for me. To get that one is always easy. The one that's difficult is the one that we've just done which is this specific line. So by color coding it, then I know, okay, the first one is easy, that was easy to see and obviously if I eliminate that, then I know these two join. So when I'm confused, then I just do these little graphs and I link it up and I say, okay, can you see it's both in the first quadrant? So okay, they both have to be in the first quadrant and then I continue drawing it. Okay, let us take the inverse of the negative graph. We know y is equal to negative 3x squared. When we drew it, we knew that we had a point 1 and negative 3 minus 1 and negative 3. If we're going to restrict it, what are the two ways that we can restrict it? Look, it's exactly the same as the previous ones. It is going to go from negative infinity to the turning points and then from the turning points to infinity. Now, if we are restricting it, then what are we doing? We are only drawing the bit that is from negative infinity to zero, which means that we are not going to draw this line. Now, we know that we have a coordinate on minus one and minus three. Inverse means we swap x and y. So I am going to have a coordinate on minus 3 and minus 1. Minus 3 and minus 1. x is minus 3 and y is minus 1. I also know that I have a point on 0, 0. Now how do we draw it? We simply join the dots. Then to confirm that we are doing it right, we can say, okay, this is my x is equal to y line. Does it look like when I fold it, it would be okay? And you can see it will definitely work. Now let us do the other one. Let us do the second restriction. Now what would the second restriction be? The second restriction would be 0 to infinity. Again remembering that the 0 is a square bracket because it is touching 0. If I were to draw just the restricted version, I'd have a point on 0, 0 and I'd have a point on 1 and minus 3. Now, what would the inverse be? The inverse means the x becomes minus 3 
and the y becomes 1. The x becomes minus 3 and the y becomes 1. We also have a point on 0, 0 and we can simply continue. Then to double check ourselves, we draw the x is equal to y line and we see when I fold it, does it fold on each other? And it does. So what we should remember is that for all parabolas, the only restrictions that are really valid is minus infinity to turning point and from turning point to infinity. Thank you for watching.